Hello, hello, how's that Rise Endgame treating you? Have you melded any talismans recently? It hurts me every time I do. Hey guys, and welcome back to Rage Gaming. My name is Hollow, and today I'm talking talismans. You see, now Rise has been released, the data mining of the information in our current build of play has been ongoing. And with that, we're now able to take a proper look at all the numbers, all the information, and get a real idea of how things actually work and what is actually possible in the current build. And with that, bad news, guys. You cannot physically get yourself a three weakness exploit three crit boost talisman it is not possible in the game right now but you could edit an image like cotton's genius april fool's tweet if you want to pretend however what's great about this data mined information is that we know what we can get and what is possible now as it stands there's 107 skills currently in rise all possible to acquire on the talisman just like the world decoration skills different grades have been assigned to them to decide rarity s grades are the rarest and C grades are the lowest and most common. As I mentioned, the devs did assign grades to the world skills in this way. Back in base world, when Gaijin Hunter shared the face stone skill drop chance with us, it seems we have a very comparable system to that for talismans in Rise. The best way to get the strongest talismans then is confirmed what we thought to be melding via the Wisp of Mystery and or Rebirth. Since Rebirth is unable to roll elemental skills, which are all B grade odds, your odds of getting A or S grades are actually better on any Rebirth roll. The downside of the other melds like Pool, Haze and Moonbow are that there's only so many skills you can target with those. The odds are also drastically worse of getting higher quality talismans of the targeted skill, so it is just better to true RNG with the Wisp and Rebirth because of that. With the first three melds, your chances of getting a level 2 in a targeted skill instead of a level 1 are very low or even impossible. Take Weakness Exploit. When using Moonbow to focus that skill, if you do roll a Weakness Exploit, well, it's a 100% chance for it to be a level 1 Weakness exploit with a 0% chance for it to be level 2. This is how I got my first weakness exploit talisman, which then gave me the ability to have 3 out of 3 weakness exploit in my build, so it was obviously worth it for that purpose, but now that I'm searching for weakness exploit 2, it has to be wisp or rebirth melds for that to be even possible. That's really important to know that you're not wasting your rolls on something that is impossible. So, knowing which type of melds to go for, what skills are what grade of rarity I put together four images that show all skills and their grades for you to easily refer to. The rarest would be the S grade skills, so let's start with those. These are Critical Boost, Handicraft, Mind's Eye, Focus, Marathon Runner, Offensive Guard, and Critical Draw. And there's also Artillery, Pierce Up, Spread Up, Ammo Up, Rapid Fire Up, Good Luck, Mushroom Mancer, and Jump Master. These will be the hardest to get skills on a talisman meld, so make sure you keep these if you do meld one. Next, it's the rare but certainly easier to acquire A-grade skills. These are Attack Boost, Agitator, Peak Performance, Resentment, Resuscitate, and Critical Eye. Then we also have Weakness Exploit, Latent Power, Maximum Might, Critical Element, Paralysis Attack, and Sleep Attack. There is also Blast Attack, Razor Sharp, Spare Shot, Protective Polish, Aim Booster, Power Prolonger, and Hellfire Cloak. And finally, we also have Stamina Surge, Guard, Guard Up, Load Shells, Special Ammo Boost, Normal Rapid Up, and Heroics. These are some important skills that you should definitely be paying attention to and keeping if you do get them, and we won't see them quite as often as the next two sets, however. The more common grade of B are skills that we should see a lot more often. These are Fire Attack, Water Attack, Ice Attack, Thunder Attack, Dragon Attack, and Poison Attack. There's Bludgeoner, Punishing Draw, Quick Sheath, Slugger, Rapid Morph, and Counter Strike. We also have Reload Speed, Recall Down, Steadiness, Defense Boost, Divine Blessing, and Bubbly Dance. And on top of that, there's also Speed Eating, Earplugs, Windproof, Tremor Resistance, Evade Window, and Evade Extender. And lastly, Blight Resistance, Stun Resistance, Part Breaker, Speed Sharpening, Wide Range, and Flinch Free. There's a lot of useful skills to consider there, like, for example, Quick Sheath for Longsword users, and very importantly, the Elemental Attack Buffs when using Elemental Weapons. Since those are fairly common, you should expect to see these skills melded more often. But lastly, we have the lowest grade of skills to consider, the C grade, the most common. These are Constitution, Stamina Thief, Affinity Sliding, Horn Maestro, Recovery Up, and Recovery Speed. Many resistances like Fire, Water, Ice, Thunder, Dragon, Poison, Paralysis, Sleep, Muck, and Blast Resistance. 
skills like botanist, geologist, bombardier, item prolonger, and free meal as well. And lastly, there's also fortify, carving pro, hunger resistance, leap of faith, diversion, master mounter, wirebug whisperer, and last of all, wall runner. That's every skill listed and shown with their respective grades. My god, that was a lot to say and visualize for this video, but I hope that was useful. These skills and their various rarities should give you a nice idea of what skills are rare and important that you should keep when you do meld them. And obviously the C grades and such that are more common and can be re-rolled into rebirths. Be aware, however, high grade skills do not appear to max out. You can't get a three out of three on a high grade skill. The highest number you'll get on something like a weakness exploit is going to be two out of three on that skill or crit boost another two out of three so if you have got your hands on something that's an s or an a grade and it's got two points of that skill in it you actually looked out that's the maximum you can get so congrats now then, we should also explain the skill rarity, how that affects the slot potential on a talisman. As we knew, the very best decoration slots you can get on a talisman are three decoration slots, and that can be up to a three decoration slot with a two decoration slot with a one decoration slot, AKA three to one. However, if you roll any S or A grade skill on a talisman, there is no possible way that you're going to get the 3 to one slots. At best, if you've got an S or A grade skill on a talisman, it can roll a three slot and then two one slots, which is only slightly worse and an incredible roll all the same. The highest grade skills possible with the 3 to one decoration slots on it would be a double B grade, two skills graded at B on one talisman. So if you do get yourself a B grade skill with the precious 3 to one slots, hold on to that. That skill might not be incredible Incredible, but the slots are. And actually, you know what? Some B grade skills are alright, like the elemental attack skills. Finally, then, I should talk about what is the best possible talisman in Rise based on the information we have now. The best you could get would be two skills, obviously, both at the maximum they can be, which is level two, matched with the three one one decoration slots. I think the universally best skills for, you know, any weapon or most builds would be crit boost and weakness exploit. Apparently, the odds that you can pull a level two crit boost, level two weakness exploit, three one one deco slot talisman is officially one in 390 billion so good luck with that if you drop it down to just two decoration slots only rather than the three well your odds are a lot better one in one billion five hundred and sixty million you know technically a lot better odds but yeah again good luck with that so as the data mine suggests the only functional and possible version of this best talisman is just gonna be a weakness exploit that has level two on it with two decoration slots your chances of getting that are a more reasonable one in two thousand seven hundred and 24. Basically, a little less than 3,000 rolls on talismans to hopefully get this one, which is a lot more possible to farm. Something you can reasonably get in the time that you play this game, which is just what Arex got just days ago, according to his Twitter. Can I get even a crumb of your luck, please, mate? So if you do get a talisman with two levels of weakness exploit on it and two decoration slots, that's it, man. That's like the best farmable talisman. The only way you're going to get better than that is the incredibly ridiculous one in billions chance. So that's something to consider. But there you have it. This information does give us a nice idea of what is actually possible in the game and also what is reasonable and importantly, what talismans are worth keeping and what are worth uh, re-rolling. Basically, goodbye B and C grade skills. I hardly knew you. Oh, well, that was a lot of information. This did take me a bit of time to even understand and then put the video together. So I hope this was worth making. If this was useful to you, hit like on the video. It really does help the channel and it lets me know to think about making more videos like this one in the future. Be sure to subscribe for more Rise videos from me, Rage, and Cotton. But until next time, I've been Hollow. You've been you. Thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is. Uh. Goodbye.